Hey guys, I'm Jordan, and you're tuned in as well with Morgan and Sam from The Wealth Project. And using nothing more than a zero commission trading platform, we're providing you with a lot of advice and information to help you grow your wealth. Uh, just know that this is not financial advice, so whatever's in this video is purely for entertainment reasons. Yeah, today our topic is TDAC and their merger, or well, their SPAC merger with Lottery.com. And we're going to be discussing their recent investor presentation. How much does it tell about their future? Recent bearish market for SPACs. And basically just some more information about their delay and what we can expect from them in the future. So what do you think? Yeah, so um, the merge is obviously um, for July. Um, and obviously um, SPACs, um, like we said previously, um, have been taking a bit of a hit at the moment. Um, obviously, over Christmas time um, and before that, SPACs were doing really well, um, as we've seen through DraftKings and um, several others. Um, it's a great way um, instead of an IPO. Um, so obviously, currently, the market's sort of trading sideways. Um, it doesn't know what it wants to do. Um, obviously, with inflation and um, a few other things on top of that, um, we're sort of just waiting to see what's going to happen in the general stock market. But in terms with um, TDAC, um, obviously the merger has been set, um, so it's it's confirmed. Um, and yeah, there's some great things that obviously we're going to discuss through the presentation um, about it. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it looks pretty promising. I think the thing after looking through that investor presentation in general is that uh, it all seems very, very optimistic. I mean, they could be right. I don't I don't really doubt because especially with the with the accessible market and the size of the the growth that they could reach I guess with their company yeah. it could happen well, they, but yeah they they never make a negative investor presentation there do they of course <laughs> and, and this, and this, um, yeah yeah it just wouldn't work but uh, yeah I know what you mean a lot of times SPACs are with potential companies or companies with no growth um like you look at like Virgin Galactic um, and a lot of like industries like that. A lot of the mergers we've seen are with companies with which have either got massive potential or are like no revenue sort of research and development stage. But actually, in this case, yeah, obviously Lottery.com are making millions every year. Um, yeah. So that that is one big difference. It, it's not there's no concept to prove because people love gambling so yeah the the lottery market it's just under a 400 um billion dollar industry um it's so the the opportunity there they compared it um which is in the presentation um it's larger than film video game and SaaS industries all combined um and by 2025 it's supposed to reach um 652 billion so um you can see there's huge growth in this, um, and their vision really is to be the Amazon of gaming. Oh, yes. Yeah. So in terms of uh, where it's sitting now, um, we can see if we get TDAC. So currently it's uh, forty percent uh, shorted or just under. Um, and as we've seen uh, just recently with Clover Health, um, obviously we've just seen a short squeeze, um, and it it basically doubled um, within a week. I think it went more than that. Um, so it's when a stock is, um, shorted so heavily and then obviously squeezes, um, it has a huge run and then obviously people trade the momentum on top of that. Um, and then if we go through this, uh, presentation in terms with obviously who, um, who's the CEO and so on, um, obviously Jason Robbins, who obviously we all know who owns DraftKings and has done obviously really well through that, um, so obviously the, the team they've got is pretty solid, obviously with, uh, as you can see, with the management experience, you know, from Walt Disney, Expedia, you know, there's some big names in there. Yeah, uh, that um, is one of, the, one of the main things, isn't it, really, to, to look for on on SPAC plays in general and to be honest, in general investments. If they've got a high powered board, they generally succeed. Yeah. Um, obviously a lot of this was down to the DraftKings founder being on board after their success, like they went at like 200% or something ridiculous last year. So as soon as he got on board, everyone was just hyped about TDAC. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think that's it. Um, in terms, obviously, obviously we've seen with the crypto as well, um, they're just slowly introducing the crypto. So they will be accepting crypto and fiat as payment methods. And that's obviously going to attract sort of the gro global um, users, um, which obviously draw through crypto and that being your thing. You know, we've seen crypto a little bit volatile at the moment, obviously with Bitcoin and Ethereum, not sure what they're going to do. Really, the, you can't really Tesla tell. Not yeah. Accepting it either. Or Shiva, Sam. Oh, Shiva's the one, I tell you. Yeah. Dogecoin killer, mate. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, if Shiva ever reaches a dollar, you see me in my Ferrari out front, we love in it. Um, yeah, so back to the lottery. Um, so they're the largest uh, lottery data provider in the world, and they power Google, um, roughly about 25 countries, and then obviously Amazon and um, Alexa is powered by them as well. So they've got obviously several business models. So with Alexa, for instance, if you ask what the Powerball numbers is, I don't have an Alexa, I have a Google, but anyway, um, she'll tell you that but Lottery charges a subscription fee for that. So that's one of their data revenues uh, they bring in. Um, so obviously Amazon and Google being one of the clients, obviously we all know who they are um, by charging a subscription or as per record fee. Um, and then continuing to expand the API offering to enable more features, games and payment off um, options. So um, in terms of the tech sort of side, um, they're just growing. Um, they've got an active uh, nine new partners by 2023 across 12 countries because um, obviously some companies go by state they go by country and they don't expand but lottery.com is going to be a, a global brand essentially and everyone loves to gamble and they've got the first mover advantage and the name yeah that's it yeah for me I'm more of a poker player but you know <laughs> I haven't really saying? gambled much in my life, no? to be honest. All Not me there. personally. Uh, I guess yeah. maybe you can count the crypto market as gambling. Yeah. Well, yeah, crypto and stocks, to be fair. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to have a pretty strong stomach for crypto. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I always make my um my annual donation to Skybet. So. Yeah. On annual horses. donation. <laughs> yeah. Always give it a go. Yeah. But, you won last time on the horses. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm alright with horses. <laughs> I I can do those, but anything else and pretty dreadful. Did you ever look at the crypto um sort of blockchain side on this Jord? I was just gonna read a few facts, yeah, I don't know like if you I, did or not, and see what you think of it. I saw that they were looking to move into the blockchain. They had some revolutionary thing for, for making games of chance work a bit a bit better uh yeah. using blockchain. But Honestly, unless you see some sort of white paper or something like that, or an explanation of how they're going to make it better, uh, are they going to use an existing platform? Are they going to make their own? There's a lot of questions there, and they didn't yeah. really answer them. Yeah. So, and I wouldn't expect them to, to be honest. In an investor presentation, that's not really the time to be going over the technical details of your crypto solution. But yeah, I I, I did think on that that like sort of the same as you it was just kind of it was fairly broad didn't tell you a lot but i don't know that's because they're just sort of leaving their options open and seeing where crypto goes um because yeah it's such, it's such a big impact crypto, crypto at the moment yeah that it'd be, like, you know it'd be silly not to introduce it if it were i mean yeah these For days even companies the like tesla are trying to you know get their name associated with crypto even even with the energy usage implications and all that they're still yeah. trying to just go, oh, you know, we're going to support blockchain or support this or support that. Everyone yeah. wants a piece of the pie, but no one necessarily understands how. Yeah. 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 Uh, that's it. Especially from like a month ago or two months ago when crypto was just taken off. Um, and even people not involved in crypto were, were getting in on it. So I think yeah. it's, it's died down a little bit, to be honest, since then because of the crash. So. I mean, people only like to speak about it when they're when they're winning, aren't they? So I think, I think the same with stocks. To be honest, where last year when everything was rising, there was a huge surge in popularity. People were investing in things like that, but obviously, as soon as it's a bit of a red market, people get cold feet. 
So you could literally trade in anything last year and it go up. No fundamentals or valuation to it. Yeah. Yeah, you could have put your money in an S and P five hundred ETF, yeah. and you would be well up. Yeah. Because of the recovery, though, it really crashed. I mean, there was there's quite a big drop from like March twenty twenty, right? And then if you look at the one year gain from twenty twenty one, so like January till now, it's quite high in general for most stocks, but. I don't know. I, I feel like the reason for that is because we're already quite low compared to the highs of 2019. And then we ended the year still quite low. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're currently, you know, people are saying in a bearish market, but I think it's more of a recalculation market on the sense that um, stocks weren't being valued and now they're actually being valued. So um, everything's been recalculated and obviously that causes a drop. Um, but obviously with the merger happening soon, Usually with SPACs, we see quite a nice runner, and then it sort of it it drops, but it recalculates its level, and then it sort of that's where the growth potential comes in with a company. Yeah, I guess with TDAC and SPACs in general, a lot of that depends on like investor risk appetite. Yeah, and where does that come from necessarily? So I don't know. We just have to like wait and see. Yeah, I was seen on a forum, they, they want TDAC to be um, the next AMC or GameStop, which is obviously the meme stocks we've, we've seen shoot up. Um, but I think that would devalue the price a lot. Um, I think obviously it would have a huge hype, but I think the valuation would go out. And then obviously from people who have actually traded it through obviously technicals and everything, um, I don't think that would do the stock any good. Yeah, yeah. It, it it just won't be the next AMC or, or GameStop, really, I think, because they're, they're targeted sort of struggling stocks and and sort of they're targeted businesses which have kind of historically have fallen from grace from where they are. And I think TDAC doesn't really, really fit the bill for that. Um, I think if they were to try and make it like CCIV, then uh, that would sort of be more realistic where CCIV, there was just so much hype around it that even people not involved in stocks were going, oh my God, got to get in on CCIV. It, that's more likely, I think, than, than the um, it basically becoming a meme stock because it, I think the meme stocks, sort of, they have no sort of basis, whereas obviously TDAC's quite a, obviously it's, it's a very positive looking merger. Um, with sort of a proven application, yeah, it's got a, it's got a proven system. The revenue is obviously um, coming in; um, it's only increasing. Obviously, like you said right at the start, they like to hype the presentation up, and um, you know it's it's all well and good in saying that. But obviously, um, I feel like they have actually proven it, and you know the market's there. Um, you know, just with the lottery side. Yeah, but yeah, people aren't going to stop buying lottery tickets, are they? Not any time no. soon, I everyone, don't think. Everyone loves to gamble. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's why I, everyone likes the idea that they could become a millionaire overnight. So that's it. Yeah. Nice. I, th I think we're just waiting for the um, the SPAC attack to, to come back into play. Um, and that's obviously, we don't know if that's going to be a few weeks, a few months or so on. But yeah. um, but obviously, with, with the merger hopefully happening in July, because it's got pushed back, I think, once or twice. Um, we should see a really nice run up. And um, to be fair, I, I put a price target about thirty to thirty five dollars plus on this. Yeah, be nice. I think, yeah, I, th I think it, it's hard to tell because of the market we've just had. Um, I think after I, the merger, that's a three three to six month play. Yeah, I. It could, my... I mean, there's there's a lot of targets saying like um, sixty to eighty, but like. It's so under the radar, TDAC, at the moment. Like, if you just search YouTube yeah. videos or anything on that, it, it's literally just a few investors, but obviously high-end uh, investors uh, speaking about it. So, obviously, when these institutes start to get in, we're slowly seeing that now. Um, but usually that means you're too late to get in. Yeah. Yeah, it makes me kind of nervous. I, in, in my, uh, I've sort of put a price target... Uh, not far off where Morgan's got to, although he's just managed to leave the meeting. Um, I'm sure we'll be back. But, so. <laughs> yeah. 
but yeah, I think I sort of put a price target really very conservatively 25 just because of the, the market we've had recently. Um, mm. it, it, it will easily reach 30, I think highs 35 to 40, but yeah, my conservative yeah. estimate would be 25. I was just saying Morgan. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously it's great from where it is currently. So, yeah, I was just trying to get the chart up actually. Yeah, I mean, it's it's like if they do really manage to reach anywhere close to the targets that they've made or these uh, these these goals that they have for like 2023 especially, and maybe they throw in a little bit of blockchain here and there. I don't know. It depends what they're going to do, but they can really run up. I feel like the, the only real issue for TDAC is that, uh, well, I guess for lottery.com, is that the barrier to entry into like, the lottery market or the digital lottery market is pretty low. Um, they don't really have any like exclusive deals as far as I know. And yeah, I think it, their business model is like they buy the ticket for you. Like personally, I don't, I don't know exactly how it works, but I, I think that's how it is. Yeah. They, they buy it uh, for you. Um, yeah. And obviously they take a sort of a small commission trade off a uh, trade off that uh, price off that. Cause obviously you can't trade in other countries, lotteries, um, so that's sort of how they they how how they do it. I guess uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how their projections go. I don't know how their um, upcoming financial statements are going to be. I don't know when they're scheduled to release stuff either. Uh, maybe there's something coming up. The last I saw was that they were delaying. They were going to delay the merger. Well, they, they requested a delay of three months to September. Yeah. Uh, but I think be, that was due to heavy regulation or something. They've changed the regulations. Yeah, or... yeah the interesting one is I think the, the main sort of barriers, especially for, for gambling in the US, are obviously the laws. So obviously New York have recently passed the, passed the gambling bill. Um, but really, unless uh, obviously in some states, gambling just isn't legal um well it's of sports gambling obviously I'm, I'm on about the i think the lottery is throughout america um so i think that, that's the main barrier for it i must know well when i did read through um a re read through the report regarding blockchain my my instant thought where when I saw it was that they're just trying to capitalize on the blockchain crypto hype at the moment. I, 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 I do think it's going to bring in power. new users, though. Obviously, in, in the long run, I, 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 yeah, I think no, depending not on many that's... people paying crypto for things because not they, yet. They don't, yeah, but uh, yeah, but you're talking like we're decades away from that. Yeah, but I don't think it hurt. It hurts to start early. But I don't think people do having it the option there. because that that the pizza guy story. Obviously, you bought <laughs> yeah, pizza bought dominoes, with it. Was it? Yeah. But a lot of people buy Bitcoin. They don't buy it to use. They buy it to. Um, it's an investment like kind of thing. It's not it. to obviously, use. It's, it. it's far yeah. easier to invest in dollars and and just switch your money from like if I want to, I switch my money from pounds to dollars. And a lot of the time, you can just pay for it straight out of your bank, and your bank will do it automatically for you. So, I, yeah. I, yeah, I kind of thought they were just trying to cash in on the hype of it, really, with that. But I, I must admit, I, I think the, the blockchain technology, obviously, is, is good. Um, but the actual using of, of crypto to purchase it, I just, I don't know, didn't quite believe it, to be honest, at, at this stage. I think it was more, more of a gimmick than a than a realistic proposition. I mean, it's realistic because they can do it, but I just don't think it'll pull in loads of people just because people want to use crypto. Unless you start yeah. using... And I mean, if they take Shiba Inu, then fair enough, because it also has a massive market, huge potential. <laughs> and obviously, the best... I mean, is like Shiba Inu. <laughs> would you, what would you rather pay with, a US dollar or a Shiba coin? Safe move. Uh, you, <laughs> yeah. Safe moon. Yeah. Uh, there's so many of those those crappy little coins, and 
there are one in a, a million chance they're going to go up. But if yeah. they do go up, the returns are amazing. Yeah. I mean, and we so, have seen some that. might say it's a lottery then. Maybe the new lottery.com is coinmarketcap.com. Love it. You heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. The Wealth Project, yeah. we are sages. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to be honest, I'll, I'll be happy if they start accepting um, US Wealth Services stocks at this rate. <laughs> yeah. And I'll just, I'll just sell off everything to lottery in exchange for <laughs> one in a gazillion chance of winning a million dollars. <laughs> 